Right, welcome back. Um, tonight, what we're going to do is look at a mock FA1 for Nepalese earthquake task. So the way I set this up is to look at um, mock. There's my mock. There's my source material in A3 form, same as I would do in Year 12. Uh, I've got an Excel task, so the students will use Excel to complete a scatter graph. Um, I might actually get them to do that manually as well because it is Year 11 and we can uh, give them the opportunity to try for uh, try and work on their EA skills. Um, the main one is the GIS data. Now, what I've done here is I've pulled down data from USGS from one of my previous lessons and put it into a comma delimited text. Uh, I've then pulled out uh, the main Nepalese earthquake, the single earthquake. So this is a single earthquake in Excel, in common delimited, and um, it's the 7.8 on the 25th of March, sorry, 25th of April, 2015, and it's 7.8. So it's really important to just have that single one um, earthquake, and um, then I'm going to go to map, and I'm going to add add layer from file and I'm going to choose this, the main Nepalese earthquake and open that. I'm going to import. Um, it's important it, as it because it's a single point on the Earth's surface it does zoom in on that particular point so you do have to zoom out and I'm just hitting the the minus sign there to get out into you know uh, a reasonable there's Nepal there, there's China, India, and I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm just going to select location. I'm going to change the uh, symbol. Uh, I'm going to do a red star because this is the main earthquake. And I'm just going to make it 30. Let's make it 40. And I'm happy with that. There we go. Um, that's really important. So the next point we're going to do is we're going to go to analysis. Now, analysis is uh, one of those tasks that we don't use a lot. Uh, I'm going to use the Use proximi Proximity uh, button. I'm going to hit that, and then you can see Nearest, Find Nearest, Create Drive Times. The one we want is Create Buffers, because what we're going to do is create a, a buffer. We want the Nepal main Nepalese earthquake. We want distance, and we want kilometers. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create um, multiple buffers um, and to distances separated by spaces. So I'm going to go 10 kilometers, 20 kilometers, 30 kilometers. Up to 70 kilometers. And I might even, let's do 80. Because um, now I need to change this because it is going to call this um, main Nepalese earthquake buffer zone and then all I need to do is run the analysis now this will run the analysis it will create a buffer zone layer you can see that doing it here and it will create a nice, nice buffer zone layer for this one particular point on the surface now this can be done within your school uh, you can do all sorts of um, great projects with this particular analysis tool And there it is there. So we're going to zoom in and you can see we've got this main point. But what we're going to do here is we're going to be a little bit clever with what we do. So I'm going to go in here. You can see I've just changed it. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. I'm going to go to options. Then I'm going to classify the data. And you can see it divides it up. I'm going to go four classes. I'm pretty happy with that. 10 to 20, 20 to 40, 40 to 60, 60 to 80. Um, really happy with that. Now, the trick here is with the symbology. What I want to do is I want to find um, a, a color ramp that actually goes from dark to light. Dark at the top to light. But I want to nice color ramp there we go i like that one let's go with so that's not the color ramp i want to go dark in the center so let's go light to dark and see what happens there we go 
So the closer to the center, um, the, the darker. So I've got 10 to 60. Now with this symbology, what I want to do is I want to go outline, I want to go dark, and I want to go OK. Um, because what I want to do here is I want to go transparency. And you can see there I'm making it 50% transparent. The further it is away, the, the lighter it is. Really happy with that. Now, what I can do to make this more complex is I can add a layer from the file. Um, what I can do is add the Nepalese um, earthquakes multiple import data. There's all my, um, I could go magnitude or, I'm actually just gonna go show location and just go earthquakes. And I'm gonna change my symbology. I'm gonna make it um, a purple circle. I'm gonna go 12. Yep, pretty happy with that. I'm done. I'm gonna add. This time I'm gonna search for a layer. Uh, no, I'm gonna search for uh, ArcGIS Online. Tectonic lights. And hit enter. No, this is a good one. Brilliant. Now I'm just gonna zoom into this. One more. And you can see here I've got a really nice map. Not the best background. So maybe I want to change my background. So I just go here and have a look. I quite like um, the National Geographic one because I can zoom out and you can see there I've got a boundary and I've got lots of good data there. The Himalayas are there. Uh, let's just zoom out one more. Um, and I could add other data, but I'm really happy with that. So I'm going to go save, save as, and I'm going to label this Nepalese I'm going to add some tags. And I'm going to save my map. Um, this is just the start. So I can print out this map and uh, then I can add to it as well. Uh, in the next lesson, we'll add to it. Uh, this is how you create buffers and do analysis and create uh, data from one particular point. It's a great lesson for students to cre create complex maps. Thanks for listening and I'll talk to you next time.